Hello, and welcome to Esprit's latest tips and tricks video. My name is Justin Davila, and today I'm going to show you how to create custom turning tools in Esprit 2020. This will allow you to create tools with custom geometry when none of the existing Esprit options match your desired shape. In this program, we will be machining this groove with tapered walls. Therefore, our goal is to create a custom ID grooving insert with tapered geometry to properly machine this feature to a finish. The custom tool creation process begins with 2D geometry. The user has the option to draw their geometry, import a drawing of the tool profile, or import a solid model of the tool and smash the geometry within a spree. In this case, we'll be importing a DXF drawing file for our custom grooving tool. When importing the DXF, ensure that merge is selected to avoid opening the geometry in a new file. You may also need to adjust the import options to ensure you are scaling the tool geometry properly. In this case, both the DXF and Esprit are using inch units. When importing a DXF, you will commonly find the geometry will import onto its own layer. To organize the workspace, hide other layers so that only the DXF is visible. It is also a good idea to utilize the Delete Duplicate Elements tool before beginning to work with the DXF file. This will remove any duplicate geometry that can cause problems if accidentally selected during this process. Next, you must reorient the geometry into a standard position before moving on with the custom tool creation. Specifically, we will want to position the insert geometry into a 3V tool orientation with the insert facing downwards prepared to cut on the main spindle side. Notice that only the insert geometry must be in a 3V orientation, while the orientation of the shank does not matter. This can be easily accomplished by selecting the tool geometry and using a symmetry transformation about the x-axis. We then want to position the center of the leading tool nose radius at the esprit origin. This will be the point that determines the tool compensation. Therefore, it is crucial that we locate this correctly. To do so, we can utilize the point tool to create a point at the tool nose center. We can then use a translate transformation in the two points option to easily translate the geometry. Once the geometry is positioned, our goal is to separate the profiles of the tool insert and the tool shank. The two profiles must be two continuous chains of elements with no gaps or overlaps. I suggest creating a layer for each to easily organize the geometry selections. Then begin by selecting the insert geometry and move it to the insert layer. You may need to make connections or add additional geometry if your DXF does not provide a closed loop. After this, you will want to do the same for the shank profile. You will want to be certain there is no overlapping geometry in your selection, as this can lead to tool creation errors. In this scenario, I choose to select the outside profile of the shank manually to ensure that there are no overlaps. An easy way to check for overlaps is to auto-chain your selection, which should produce one chain when selecting a continuous loop with no overlaps or gaps. You'll see here, when I auto-chain the shank profile, it creates one two-chain, which confirms that there are no overlaps or gaps, and I can use this profile for my custom tool. Once you have organized the profiles by layer, we will need to save these out as Esprit Tool Geometry Files, or .ect files. To do so, select the geometry and navigate to Save As. You'll want to change the Save As type to the correct format to ensure successful custom tool creation. Repeat the process for the shank, and in this case, with the shank, you can utilize a propagation technique for rapid selection of the geometry. Failure to save out these profiles as .ect files will not allow you to create a custom tool correctly. Once the files are saved, we are ready to create the custom tool. Navigate to the Tools tab in the Project Manager and select Custom Insert from the Turning Tools dropdown. General settings have been selected to place the tool on the upper turret. For tool orientation, you will want to select an option based on the desired insert orientation. This will not reflect the orientation of the holder. To machine this ID groove, we will want to cut with the insert facing upwards and towards the main spindle. Therefore, a 2V orientation is the best choice. In the Custom Geometry tab, you will want to import your Esprit Tool Geometry files for the shank and insert that we have just saved. You will see their previews update on the screen. For a tool that is similar to a turning insert or has one cutting edge, we would set the custom type to custom profiling. For tools that are similar to grooving inserts or have two cutting edges, we will utilize the custom form tool. 
For tools that don't fall into these categories above, custom geometry is available. On the cutter tab, we will be selecting a custom type form tool. It is also important to note that cutting parameters will not automatically populate from the geometry file. You will need to fill in these values detailed in the diagram above. These values have been predetermined for a cutting insert. Your insert and shank will also extrude based on the thickness values. To change a tool from right hand to left hand, you can employ a positive or negative thickness. For this video, we can leave these values as default. Once filled out, create the custom tool and navigate to simulation to confirm the custom tool looks as expected. As you can see in the simulation preview, the custom tool has the tapered insert and has been created successfully. Therefore, we are now ready to apply operations. To do so, we will bring back the program layer and hide the custom tool layers that we created earlier. We can then apply a grooving operation to rough the tapered grooving feature, followed by a contouring operation to finish. On the Operations tab, you will want to select your custom tool. Then simply build the operations as you would with a normal tool. As you can see on the screen, I have created a tapered groove to rough, and I will now create a contouring operation to finish. Following these operations creation, I will simulate to verify my toolpath. Here you can see the insert roughing the groove, followed by a contour to finish the tapered edges. And this will conclude This is Free Tips and Tricks video. We hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our website at isfreecam.com to subscribe to our newsletter for more helpful videos and upcoming events for Free. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.